Hey folks, today we have a computer video. I'd like to introduce you to a new build. Uh, I have decided to separate my main computer and have a separate, well, let me put it this way. I want to have a main computer and then a gaming rig. This is the gaming rig. Um, you'll see a video on the main computer explaining that later. Here it is. It's a Lee and Lee case with a simple DVD drive in it. I like these cases quite a bit. It has a uh, one of my Ultra LSP 550 power supplies in it. So, what kind of a build is this, you may ask? Well, let's turn this over and I'll... Alright, there we go. So, this is the gaming rig. Now, I'm not like most people who game and buy the highest end crap you can possibly get for way too much money. <laughs> I go cheap. I go very cheap. So, I'm using hardware I already have, uh, which should be that I have a single one terabyte hard drive in here. I plan to add another one terabyte hard drive for more games so I can uh, download more games. Um, I have an H61 gigabyte motherboard with a Core i3-2105 in it. That will be upgraded to an i5 at some point. Uh, but the Core i3 is enough to game on. Surprisingly enough, it it's it just works just fine for that because it's dual core hyper threaded. But with more and more games being optimized for more cores, thanks to uh, the newer consoles being quad core, um, the uh, the it, it's generally a good thing to get a quad core CPU. So I'll throw an i5, a Sandy Bridge i5, in this computer eventually. Uh, not sure which one yet, uh, that remains to be seen, but it will be an i5 of some sort because the i7 r uh, really doesn't offer a whole lot more performance for gaming. Um, this is the graphics card I have in here temporarily. Uh, this card is older than the machine itself. It's a Gigabyte Radeon HD 5670, which was a budget card when it came out. If you're more familiar with NVIDIA, it's about on the same level as a GT240. Uh, so, it was a budget card, and it's an old budget card now. So, yeah, definitely not ideal for a gaming rig. Uh, so, that will be changed pretty soon, as you'll see. Uh, so, it's not too exciting. This, there's a 550-watt Ultra LSP 550 power supply. This power supply is probably five years old now, and it's been actually one of the few channel well-made power supplies that I really like. So you may be looking at this and thinking, dude, this is pathetic. You need something better than that. Well, upgrading the CPU will fix that. Uh, the only thing that I, I would definitely agree is pathetic right now is this graphics card. This thing is atrociously bad for a gaming rig. I do have 16 gigs of RAM in here, though, and two sticks, which is kind of nice. So it'll have enough RAM for a long time. Just needs a bump in the CPU and graphics department. I've waited to show you guys this thing because... Of mainly that graphics card. Today that's going to be changed. I have bought myself a new graphics card. This is a Gigabyte card since I really like their graphics cards. It has that uh, Windforce cooler on it which is really nice. It's an AMD Radeon R7 370 with two gigabytes of RAM. It's a 256-bit card which is pretty sweet. It'll have a lot of memory bandwidth. It has an owl on the front and owls are cool so that's cool. <laughs> Um, it was $150. Uh, to me, this looks about like the equivalent of the, of the, uh, as far as I can tell, this is basically the AMD equivalent of the, uh, NVIDIA, uh, 750 Ti. Uh, it's in the same price range. It looks like it has similar performance, uh, you know. So, that's perfect for me. $150 for a graphics card is a pretty damn nice price. Uh, I usually don't spend over 200 on one because I just think that's exorbitant in terms of cost. So I tend to stick with cards like this. They might not be the top end, but they'll definitely get the job done for me for a long time. Uh, mid-range cards are my go-to. They're really you don't have to buy the the latest and greatest. You can buy mid-range stuff and still get by just fine. Um, this this has everything that I would want. It has enough RAM to run Grand Theft Auto 5. Two gigs is good for that. Uh, it's factory overclocked, so that's kind of nice as well. Uh, the 256-bit memory bandwidth is one thing that I was really 
uh, really into with this card, which is much better than the budget version of this, the 360, which is 128-bit. Uh, so the memory bandwidth is cr pretty damn good on this. So let's take a look at it, shall we? If you've ever seen the Gigabyte version, the high-end Gigabyte version of the GTS, or the GTS, the uh, GTX 750Ti, then this might look very familiar to you. Except that this has, except this is a, has a little bit, a few more nice touches to it. It has a nice back plate, as you can see. There you have it. Here's the card. It's pretty beautiful. Look at that nice big heat pipe there. Has one power connector, which is perfect because this is only a 550 watt power supply. I didn't want a power hungry card that would really use a lot of power and not gain much performance, so this is perfect for that. Has a nice back plate on there, which looks really nice. Has two DVI ports, an HDMI port, and a display port, which I think is very similar to the uh, the 750Ti, although I think that might have a mini display port on it. This has a regular big size display port. One of these uh, DVI ports d will support a VGA adapter, so if you still have an old VGA monitor that's fairly good resolution, you can use that on this card. So, I think it's time to replace this old fart with the new one. Here's the old card. It's about the same size as the new one. You can do a lot with very little nowadays. This was a budget card five years ago. This is a mid-range card today. <laughs> Everything's getting smaller, man. I like that. This card still works, so I'll probably keep it around as a spare. Uh, but it's not. it doesn't have the best performance in the world, so I think uh, it'll just probably sit around a lot while this one takes over and handles all the games I need. I specifically bought this to play some newer games, uh, like Grand Theft Auto V, for example, along with any newer games that come down the pike. You know, people ask the question, can this, can this computer play this game? Can this computer play that game? Will it play Crisis 3? Blah, 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 blah. It's kind of a... It, that's such a... a questions like that, you're not really going to get the answer you're looking for, because... It really just depends on the system requirements and how new your system is. Most games will play on a fairly modern system. You might just have to crank the settings down, uh, depending on what your hardware is. On something like this, I, I don't even. I'm not the kind of person that plays my games on max settings. I, I could I could care less as long as my frame rate is good and playable. Because gameplay is what I'm after. I, I mean, if things look pretty, that's that's nice for about five minutes, and then I get over it. You know, so. That's another reason I go for mid-range cards because it makes things look pretty, but pr and pretty enough that I don't go pretty enough that I'm satisfied, but also good frame rates. So there you have it. I think now it's time to stick this uh, card in the system. Better move that blank and plate out of the way, and then let this thing go. There. Now it's starting to look more like a gaming rig with that thing in there. Now all I really need to do to make this the gaming rig that I'll keep for a long time is upgrade that CPU to an i5, uh, which will happen eventually. I'm not going to do that right away just because of uh, just because I'm not made of cash. I already spent 150 bucks on this thing for for crying out loud. But eventually I'll do that. Uh, I'll just get a CPU off of eBay and be done with it. Uh, so that works pretty darn well. Taking all the covers off. I've taken only one cover off, the DVI cover, for uh, that one port I'm going to use in the back there. And uh, this thing should be pretty much good to go. I didn't uninstall the driver before taking that one out, though, so hopefully it just picks it up and it works. Uh, if not, I'll download a different driver and we'll uh, get this show on the road. Uh, the thing is running Windows 8.1. Uh, it will be upgraded to 10. In, at the end of July or be, or you know in August whenever they decide to push the downloads uh, out so there you have it yeah so I'm gonna put this back up on the desk and we'll take a look at it alright this desk may look familiar to a lot of you people there you go it's right up here next to this this thing which I I might talk about that. I might not. I've just been playing around with this thing, but this is the main focus of this video. Uh, and gaming rig is up here. Got a phone charger sitting on top of it. 
so this is where it sits. It is plugged directly into that switch over there that you guys saw a video of earlier. So there you have it. Uh, it has a webcam on it for uh, Skype uh, and a microphone as well. Actually, I use the, I'd rather use that for a microphone. I am using the Samsung SyncMaster 204B monitor I repaired in a previous video. I just changed the caps and the power supply, and it came to life again. It was a Goodwill find too, and the monitor has a, has um, really nice color. 1600 by 1200 display if I remember right so it's a pretty darn good resolution for what it is uh, sure it's not 1080p but the resolution's good enough to see what you're doing and best of all this monitor puts the least fatigue on my eyes of any other monitor I have so it is perfect in that particular aspect keyboard and mouse were just the most convenient ones I grabbed uh, I have this HP keyboard here that I got at Goodwill it's a chickeny keyboard without Windows keys. It's actually one of the best rubber dome keyboards I have, but that's probably not. That's just something I threw here uh, because I haven't really been gaming on it that much. I just threw it there to use the computer. Uh, I'll probably change the keyboard out to something else at some point, considering I have much better ones on hand. That's just what I grabbed and used for the time being. I might pull out my Cherry Switch keyboard. I might pull out my other Topre one. I'm not sure. Uh, I'll make that decision eventually. Uh, I'm sure you. I'm sure you guys would love to know what I use for gaming, at some point whenever I uh, make that decision. So, let's turn this guy on. Let's see if the graphics card works. Yep, graphics card appears to work fine. Let's go into the BIOS. This might be an H61 Sandy Bridge chipset motherboard, but it does have UEFI on it, which is why I'm using it. CPU runs very cold, as you can see. has a Core i3-2105 in it at 3.1 gigahertz, uh, which actually, this, this chip has been really good. People like to bash the Core i3 because it's not the top-of-the-line one, and simply because of that, when they've really never used one. Uh, they think an i7 is all you'll ever is all anybody should ever buy, but honestly, Core i3s are good enough sometimes. Uh, for gaming, maybe not so much. It'll get a Core i3 like this will get you by. Don't get me wrong. If you want to buy one of these to just get your system running, and then upgrade later like I am, that's fine. You know, it'll run games because most games mash the CPU or mash the GPU more than they do the CPU. So you really should be worrying about your graphics card more than you are your CPU, which is why I had decided to upgrade to this AMD Radeon R7 370 at the time I did, as opposed to, uh, you know, just plunging for the CPU right away. Because that CPUs, waiting for that, these, CP, these Sandy Bridge CPUs will only go down in price anyway. So, it, you know, waiting doesn't hurt. It'll work. I mean, look how fast it boots still. This is off of a normal hard drive, mind you, as opposed to an SSD. I don't think it's happy with me. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah, I think I might have to mess with the drivers a little bit to make this card work. I'll be back. It worked the second time I booted it, funny enough, so let me uh, log in here. It looks like the resolution's back down to potato, so all I have to do is download some drivers and that'll fix it. Yeah, the resolution's back down to bleh, so let's fix that, shall we? Let me uninstall this AMD driver and we'll go download the other one. No, don't, don't, don't start Steam right now. So, let's go and install that driver. The nice thing about AMD drivers is there's literally a button when you uninstall it. Just uninstall everything. And if you don't have an AMD chipset, that just uninstalls all the graphics crap right then and there. I'm sure that'll show up eventually, but I'll install the proper driver. Alright, so... Alright, so I have the drivers installed. Uh, now we're going to try out a game. We're going to try out uh, War Thunder just to see how uh, 
just to see how pretty the planes look and to see whether the graphics card functions properly. I'm not going to do a demo of how it runs. This isn't exactly a review on the performance of this graphics card because I know it's going to be decent enough for me. But I figured I'd give you sh at least show you guys that it, that it's doing something. So once Steam decides to hurry its ass up, to oh there we go, cool. So we're going to War Thunder. Continue to hit yes constantly, and uh, once War Thunder's all working, we'll uh, take a. Finally, I got the game started. That took forever to update. Okay, all this crap needs to go away so I can look at planes. Look at that. My plane looks pretty. And the frame rate looks pretty good. Detail on each plane looks nice. If I do this, it works fine. Yep, looks like this card's gonna be a beautiful one. Yeah, I'm getting. When I move it around, it barely drops the frame rate. It's at, almost at 60 the whole time. Even when I move the thing all around like that and just bash it, it goes down to maybe 50. And this monitor is. This is a 60 hertz monitor, so 60 frames per second is your target goal. Uh, so, you know, there you have it. Uh, seems to be working perfectly. So, I just thought I'd introduce you guys to the gaming rig. Of course, I'll make another video once I update the, uh, or update, upgrade the CPU and everything. And I will use this to play my games on for a little while, so. For a good while, I should say, actually. Yes, I'd like to quit. So, all in all, this is a nice machine. I really like it. Well, folks, the show isn't over yet for the gaming rig. I managed to score this for extraordinarily cheap on eBay. This is an Intel Core i5-2500K. I managed to snag this for $100. <laughs> so I saved like $25, $30 on the price of what one normally would cost on eBay. I absolutely scored on that one. I was going to buy like a 2300 or a 2320. Uh, but then I saw this, and this is a much better deal, considering it's the same CPU I have in my main computer. These will essentially be the same machine, which makes my OCD tendencies very, very satisfied and happy. So, uh, I'm going to open this thing up and uh, take the i3 out of it, stick, give the i3 back to its rightful place, which is in my bedside computer, and put the Core i5 in here, and hopefully I won't have to upgrade this computer for quite a while. The only thing that's a bit out of date with it is uh, the uh, the PCI bus on it is 2.0 instead of 3.0, uh, but that's to me that's really not a huge deal. I also did something uh, in the meantime when I shot the last portion of this video. I stuck another one terabyte hard drive in here, so now I have one a Western Digital one terabyte drive as the boot drive and a Hitachi one terabyte drive as a storage drive for more games because games these days are just getting huge so I decided to take some drives from my uh, junk drawer file server and stick them in here and then I'll buy I'll buy more server class drives for the junk drawer and bring that back up to the two terabytes and hopefully four terabytes eventually of space <clears throat> maybe even three I don't know yet but anyway I'm gonna stick the CPU in there and uh, I'll boot it up and show you that, that it works and everything. They did something really stupid. They wrapped the CPU in bubble wrap, then put it in this anti-static bag. You're supposed to wrap this in the anti-static bag, then wrap the anti-static bag in bubble wrap. You got it backwards, man. What the hell? <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm sure that it works. So I'm going to clean this off and stick it in the machine and give it a go and see if it works. And then my gaming rig will be complete for the foreseeable future. Okay, I've installed the CPU, and uh, another thing I did is I added a USB card, because you notice that this motherboard does not have that many USB ports, only four, mostly because it has all the legacy ports over, it has a legacy port up here and the onboard video, so I like these legacy ports, that's why I keep them, but uh, yeah, added four more USB ports for a total of eight, I needed that for like controllers and 
things like that. So I decided to add that along with the Core i5. So hooray for more USB. Well, the chip was not damaged at all. It works just fine. Operating system picked it up no problem. Windows 8.1 Pro there. And as you can see by the date, it'll be Windows 10, hopefully by next month. Yeah, that Core i5 works perfectly. No problems at all. There you go. Working no problem. It's got four physical cores. Virtualization's turned on. It's barely using the CPU at all. So that should be a good CPU for gaming, I think, uh, in this gaming rig. Uh, I plugged my printer into the USB card I stuck in the machine, just because the printer's not that important that it needs a lot of power. But there you have it, folks. That is your introduction to the gaming rig, along with a few upgrades uh, here and there. More USB ports and a better CPU, mainly. So this system is definitely buttoned up and good to go for gaming for quite a while now. That um, Radeon R7 370 is a, pretty, is a really good card, actually. I've been using it to play a few games here and there and haven't had one issue while gaming. I've had one issue th from the, dr from the uh, AMD drivers, though. Typical AMD ATI driver problems. Uh, that I, that have been a thing for a long time, and that is when the dis when I have the display set to sleep, uh, you know, in the power management settings. If I set that to sleep, uh, sometimes the display will turn off and won't turn back on again. Essentially, it's it's something that's called display loss. Uh, that that happens. I've seen that happen before on some graphics drivers, and uh, this is Catalyst 15.7, which had a lot of major feature upgrades in it, so I'm assuming that there's some bugs in there that they haven't worked out quite yet. So what I've done instead, in the meantime, is I've just turned off all the power management, and if I don't want this monitor to be turned on, I'll just shut it off. <laughs> so, that's a way around that problem for now. Uh, nothing happens while gaming, it's only power management issues that seem to make the driver act funny, so... There you have it. That is the gaming rig. Uh, One hundred dollar Core i5 2500K. That was that was an excellent score from eBay. So lucked out on that one big time. Anyhow, that's your introduction to the gaming rig. Ooh, there's a hair. So that. So anyway, that is your introduction to the uh, the gaming rig. It's got a nice new graphics card in it, uh, which uses an, it uses an older GPU, but it's still a really good card for what it is. Uh, got Windows, Core i5, 2500K. This thing is buttoned up and good to go. There's also one thing in particular I add to this gaming rig as well, a bit late in the game here. And that is this keyboard, which there be, will be a future video about, but just to prove why it's a significant keyboard, just let that sound sink in a little bit. <laughs> Anyhow, that will be a subject of a future video. This is the gaming rig. I hope you folks enjoyed this video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.